Hello everybody and welcome to this afternoon's webinar about embedding mental health and wellbeing into curricula. Today's webinar is hosted by the English Australia Mental Health SIG, so thank you to the SIG conveners for setting this up. And it's going to be run in an interview style. So the facilitator, um, today's host for the interviews is Fiona Taylor. And Fiona is one of the deputy conveners of the Mental Health SIG, and she's a teacher at the University of Western Australia um, Centre for English Language Teaching. So thank you, Fiona. Thank you. Um, so I would like to introduce Leanne Helpeth, who's the manager for teaching programs at Curtin English, also in Perth, and also Anthony Vaughan, um, an eloquent teacher from CQ. English University um, in Melbourne. Um, so just to say that there'll be an opportunity for questions at the end of the end of this discussion. So if you can hold off until the end, that would be great. Uh, so just to to kick off, um, Leah, what does your centre's mental health initiative involve? Um. So hi everyone. Good afternoon. And um, really, there's a there are four. Um, key factors, four key areas. So today I will talk about Curtin Life and how we've embedded that into the, into the curriculum. Um, however, we're also looking at an inclusive approach, so using the social programme and all school events to, to encompass um, issues with mental health. So we had, um, for example, spin classes that teachers and students attended, and there were competitions through those spin classes. We have sports days, Lots of physical activities within the social program as well. Um, we raise awareness with staff through, and um, so all staff, so teaching staff, professional, general staff, um, with regards to mental health, and we put them through um, training, so mental health first aid, accidental counselling. Um, and we also partner with Act Bill on Commit, so otherwise known as Mentally Healthy. And um, so we collaborate with them and do competitions with them. I think the biggest thing and um, the biggest initiative for Curtin English was the Curtin Life program. So we initiated that approximately two years ago now, um, if that's correct. And we've embedded mental health um, issues um, awareness raising into that, that program. And I'll, I'll talk a bit and um, a little bit more about that um, in a second. And uh, so, what about you? Um, so, yeah, so at um, Central Queensland University in Melbourne, we've started to embed our um, curriculum with a few lessons which uh, aim to raise awareness for our students in terms of what we have at CQU. So we have counsellors on site which they can access at different times. Um, and so what I was asked to do was to, de to develop a couple of lessons which would follow on in weeks one and two of our English for Academic um, EAP program um, to sort of supplement the induction process where students do receive quite a lot of information uh, and these services are signaled to them but we come back to them in, generally on a Friday of week one of the program and again on week two of the program on the Friday just when a lot of the contents finished for the week and we have a couple of hours where students talk about um, these initiatives um, and I can go into that um, later on in the webinar. So, so how did it actually come about? Uh, so our Director of Studies is Will Alderton um, and so he actually sent me for some training at CQU um, with our counsellor uh, and that was as a um, first response. Um, teachers often are on the front line and, and I did some training about how to respond if students presented in difficulty uh, and then we discussed about how we could um, use my new knowledge in the curriculum and how we could um, um, convey that to students so that they became more comfortable with um, accessing uh, our support. And um, Leanne, how, so how did the initiative come about at um, Curtin? Okay, so um, Fiona or Sophie, if we could possibly go back to and what is Curtin Life? And I'll give you a bit, a bit of a background as to what, what the course is. So it does act as a compulsory orientation. So it's over six weeks, and there are two hours a week dedicated to this elective. 
The aim of the programme is to maximise the student experience and encompass social, academic and welfare encounters that students will come across in their study periods here at Curtin. Um, it builds in linguistic, metacognitive, cognitive skills within the course and it really supports and raises awareness of the effects of culture shock, homesickness, um, study and life balance really. And it really includes the importance of doing physical activity, participating and committing to, to um, group activities. And um, this really came about um, through recognition. So if we could just move on to the next, the next slide. Um, it came about regarding the need for some sort of orientation. So a one day information giving session um, certainly wasn't enough. We noticed um, welfare and um, mental health issues coming up in academic counselling sessions of students. So mid course, end of course, and um, things that were not necessarily related to the academic progression, but it was more of a um, mental health and wellbeing concern. We also recognised it through um, individual learning support. So we have an individual learning support programme here, um, whereby students will go for academic um, support. But in some of those cases, there was another issue there, another underlying issue that was stopping them from progressing. Um, intervention meetings regarding low attendance and a real notice of lack of integration into Australian society. So we really got together and we thought, you know, how are we going to deal with this with students? What can we put into place, which isn't a one day information giving session that may be forgotten about? So, so these are really the reasons why um, Curtin Life came about. Mm. Um, and so how, how staff and students, you know, reacted to the programme and to the lessons? And very positively. And I think I've got some student feedback here somewhere. Let me have a look. Yeah, so students are asked to provide feedback. Um, and they can decide what, you know, they have to rate whether the lessons were useful, very useful, not useful at all. And we do get a really, really positive um, number of responses from the students. Um, very good feedback from the teachers, very good feedback from the students. I think at the, at the beginning it was quite difficult because the lessons don't follow the normal shape, if you like. Um, so students had to get used to that. But in general, they find the culture shock lessons um, the most useful, the homesickness lessons as well, and the, the um, services available to students on campus. So they found those sessions extremely useful. But we regularly update Curtin Life and we review it every six to 12 weeks. Uh, and Anthony, so what about uh, we, we, with the, you know, how staff and students yeah. react? Um, yeah, before I answer that, perhaps Sophie, if you could turn to my second slide uh, and I'll just explain briefly what I what I did in the class. Sure. Thank you. Um, so you can see there on the slide. So the first step, um, this is the first lesson I developed, which was for about two hours, one to two hours, depending on how long this teachers uh, let it sort of pan out. Uh, and I based it around Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um, so I, I tried to find a concept that students could relate to, um, we could teach them about. Um, and so they watched a little video. Um, then they did a little um, questionnaire, which you can see in the center of the slide, uh, just one part of it, where they rated um, where, where they felt they were at in terms of integration in Melbourne and comfortable. So the first part's physiological needs. So it's a little bit small on the slide, but the first question is, do you know where to buy food in Melbourne? So it's really quite simple. And they say, yes, of course. And they put two ticks or one tick for maybe and zero for no. Uh, and then they go through all the questions and they give themselves a score. Um, and that sort of leads us to a bit of discussion to try and solve some of those issues. Um, and some of the other questions are about how you can get support at CQU for some more serious mental health issues. So how you can access the counsellor. So, um, and the, the last step there is there's an app which they can download on their phone um, from Study Melbourne, which is a really good uh, initiative. Um, and they have lots of information for students too. So multi-sensory. Um, getting back to your question. So staff um, seem to like the different style of class, um, as Leanne mentioned, that it's a bit different to an English class, um, but I tried to design it in a way that still followed the usual development of a lesson. So it still has learning aims um, and we try and achieve those in the, the hour to two hours. 
Um, staff seemed to like it. They had some feedback as well saying we needed to have some posters to, to really clarify what support we have at CQU because we do have a counsellor on site but students are not always aware of that. Um, and students seem to enjoy it although it's still in the early stages so we're still collating um, feedback about that. So some great ideas from CQU and also good. So that's, that's fantastic. Um, so Anthony, what has been challenging about implementing the program or the lessons? <laughs> um, I think I was just touching on that uh, just now that um, designing a lesson which is not a language lesson is it's a little bit beyond our expertise. Um, so um, luckily I'd had the training with our counsellor here so I had an idea about well um, realising that we're not there to solve students mental health uh, challenges but to, to support them at that moment and then to get them connected with the help that they need. So I, I very much tried to design the lesson like that. Um, but it did take quite a long time to develop, um, just the brainstorming and thinking, well, how can we, if we're not using language, how, how are we going to um, convey these ideas to students? Which is why I, I went on to the Maslow's hierarchy. Uh, and the second lesson I had was um, based on Are You OK? Um, which has lots of online resources and videos and that sort of thing. So using existing resources probably so that was a challenge and that was probably the solution um, for that. So that's that's what I'd recommend to people is try and st stay within your own comfort zone in terms of what you're delivering and what your teachers can deliver, um, but use existing resources. And, you know, if there's a language element, uh, all the better. Yeah. Um, and Leanne, so tell us about some of the challenges with Curtain Life. <laughs> okay. Um, there is a slide for this one, I think, so I can just summarise um, what we what we have for this one um okay yeah so i would agree and um, there with anthony and um, one of the minor ch i'd say it's a minor challenge it was it really does differ to the normal lesson um, and students and teachers needed to get used to it and also feel comfortable in that space they needed a safe environment to to want to talk about this um, and i think um one of the things curtain life does is it doesn't force students to talk about issues they've had with stress and depression um, and put them in a very uncomfortable situation. They um, volunteer to discuss these, so the, the lessons are quite general in, in that sense. And um, we were lucky enough that we had a whole new course overhaul, um, which was our Gateway course. So within Gateway, we embedded that into this, into this curriculum. So that was very easy because it was a compulsory part of the course, so students didn't really know any different. So when students went into it, um, it was just part of the course. This is what you do, this is normal, this is the compulsory elective you go to, which is quite um, contradictory, a compulsory elective. The first six weeks of Curtain Life they must attend, um, and then they can choose other electives after that. I think designing the lesson with a linguistic component is, is really quite easy, you know? You can do that through role plays, discussions, and using a communicative approach, light reading text, listening tasks, that wasn't too bad. Um, and again, like I said before, the lessons are general. They're not too confronting for students um, or staff members. And students volunteer to share their experiences. And um, I think making anything like this work, you need a whole of centre approach. It needs to include the whole of the centre. Everyone needs to be invested in the principle behind this. That includes students, um, academic staff, the general and professional staff. I also think we, you know, in, in, in any sense, you need to create positive buy-in to get something like this um, up and running and for it to be successful. I think one of the main things that made our course quite successful was how compulsory it was. So that meant that I placed a lot of, a lot of importance on it as a manager. My director places a lot of importance on it and therefore that filters to staff and students. It's compulsory, so it must be of importance. It's going to help us somehow. Um, and the lessons are relatable, so they need to be accessible for students and, and relatable. So um, those are some of the key areas where when we implemented this and things that we noticed. But I'd say the minor challenge was the, the, the difference to the normal lesson. That, that was it, really. Um, and Anthony, um, do, you, do you have any tips? for how you've, you've made the program and the lessons work? Um, so I think, yeah, hmm. just in terms of um, just back best practice for curriculum development. So having multi-sensory multi type 
um, resources. So I generally started with a video to engage students um, and then um, getting them involved and talking. So using a communicative approach. So I, I guess the tip would be, you know, use your current skills that you are using to develop curriculum. It's just um, perhaps tweak the learning outcomes. Um, the learning outcomes I had for this, the first lesson was to discuss what international students need when they move to a new country. So that can be uh, addressed with discussions. Uh, identify your current needs and how to satisfy them, um, which we got to with the questionnaire. Uh, and to locate helpful information online and via apps relating to studying in Melbourne. So they're not lear language learning outcomes, but they're, they're very helpful learning outcomes for the students. So um, very much matching learning outcomes with what's happening in the class and a bit of reflection at the end um, to see that you've achieved your outcomes. I think that's that's the biggest tip I could offer. Oh, really, Andy, do you have any tips? Um, I think, you know, the training of staff in these sorts of areas and also getting staff involved in the design of the program. So I worked quite closely with a couple of members of our senior teaching team here and the teachers in general. So getting them involved in the design of the lessons. Um, I've also just noted down here, so I, um, I don't forget, including in the course um, current trends within your centre. So these may differ um, in different centres, but things for us like things such as homesickness, um, culture shock, and um, what else have I put here? Stress before exams and um, things like that. Those um, areas that, that may affect mental health, those are the ones that we built into the curriculum. So I think it's um, remaining relevant to your learners and your environment because we are on a, a campus here and students are extremely stressed with some of our programs because of the intensity of them. Which is a really nice segue into so what, what do you think are some of the emerging trends or the issues that, that you're seeing with students in terms of mental health? Um, I think uh, this came up quite recently actually in our um, counselling sessions that we've just recently done. Students having to fend for themselves. So the big difference um, between living in their country, being looked after by parents, for example, coming over here and being independent, being on their own. So simple things like um, going to the shops and buying food and then what to do with that food. I have to cook it myself now and how do I do that? And some students don't have those basic um, um, skills. So I think having to fend for themselves and the realization that they're now independent and they're in charge and responsible for themselves. Well, that was one of them. And the homesickness and isolation comes up quite a lot. Um, culture shock understanding why people do what they do in Australia. It was hard for me when I moved over here from the UK, for example. Um, and that was part of the reason behind Curtain Life as well, and my own experience of moving over to Australia. Um, family pressure seems to come up quite a bit. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm under financial pressure to support myself. Um, I'm under a lot of stress to get the grades that I need. And so all of those external pressures. And also um, undisclosed learning disabilities. So I don't know if anyone else has come up against, come up against this or come across no. this. So maybe um, things like um, hearing impairments that have not been disclosed or dyslexia that's maybe been missed. That's really hindering the student's progress. And the student themselves might not be aware of this problem. That's something I'm, I'm starting to see a lot more of actually um, in a couple of the learners. And I think that really contributes to their unhappiness, their stress levels, and their, their, their mental health over here. And for you, Anthony, what, what, uh, what are some of the emerging trends that, that, that you all see? Yeah, definitely. Um, everything that Leanne said, definitely, we, we encounter that as well. Um, just for a different perspective on the question, I think it's more that as practitioners, where our, our awareness of students' needs is emerging. Um, the, these issues have always been there. Uh, they've always experienced them, but now we're realising our role is really important in as a triage, in a way, um, realising like, oh, somebody's not coping very well in class today. Like, maybe they're not just tired, like maybe something is going on in the background. Uh, and just, you know, just um, sensitively taking a moment to say, are you okay today? Is there something that we can help you with um, 
the university is here to help you as well as for your language, we, you know, if there's something that you need. Um, so I think that's really important and, and we can see that coming through English Australia's um, approach to this topic and there's a lot of um, awareness. Um, just in the wider community as well in Australia, where we're becoming much more aware of mental health and that it affects people at different times in their lives and in different ways. It's not a, always a permanent thing. Uh, and I think that's definitely applicable to uh, international students. It's a new situation that they're in. Um, and they're, you know, a lot of these things they are encountering for the first time. Um, so, yeah, that's how I would uh, think about it. Leanne, did you want to add something? <laughs> no, I think I actually think it's really great that we have these sorts of webinars and that it really has started to raise awareness across Australia and with with teachers and how to, you know, it's not just because the students being difficult, for example, <laughs> it is because yeah. there's an underlying issue there. Um, so it's really nice to see that this, this is really important and we're doing something about it. So I, I would fully agree there, Anthony. Mm. <laughs> Anthony, so where where to now? Um, what does your centre plan, you know, on doing yeah. this? Yeah, so we, we want to keep developing these lessons that we've worked on so far. Um, and we have got a new um, a new mental health plan coming through at CQ University. So we're sort of waiting for that to see what, what could be next as well for our development. Um, one thing that we're hoping to have is some kinds of um, cafe style workshops um, with counsellors and student experience staff so and that would be built into our curriculum as well so that would be part of their course that they'd come along and they'd be raising awareness um, of um, the support at our uh, campuses as well um, and I think that would be really good to, that students are starting to connect with people outside of their English teachers as well because um, it's one thing for us to tell them that something's available, but then for them to see somebody else who's talking about what they do, I think it really registers a lot more uh, and they can really convey to the students that we, we really are here to help. Um, we have the resources and the people here come and see us, even if you think it's, it's not what we do, we may be able to redirect you to somebody else. Um, so that's, that's the main thing that we're moving towards and further data about our current lessons as well to see as you said how teachers are finding them if if they're benefiting students and what the students think we need to gather some data about that yes we've got a, we've got a few ideas up our sleeves actually i think i've got a, i think my final slide lists some of these so it might be easier to refer to that final slide um yeah oh, is it there okay yes so um Curtin Life is part of our gateway course at the moment. It's not part of our English language bridging course, which is one of our direct entry courses. So we are revising that course and that starts on the 22nd of July. So Curtin Life will be embedded into that course as well. So it will go across the whole, the whole centre. Um, implementation, I'm just a spelling error there, of um, Connecting You, which is a reward system for academic social and welfare tasks. So this will be connected to the syllabus. So the more tasks students do in these areas, um, they'll be rewarded for. Um, further partnership with Act the Long Commit. So we worked with them at the beginning of the year to, to produce videos. So students enter the competition and they had to produce a video in their class as to how they act the long and commit. That was, that was great. Um, and we are going to apply for a grant through Act the Long Commit to host a project for Mental Health Week and we hope to give that to the students to do. I think as well, including articles, readings within the general course content um, around mental health is, is another way, and putting those in as assessment tasks. So we're definitely not forgetting about it. I think we're certainly building on it and we're learning from what we've already um, implemented. Great, thank you. Um, so uh, we're looking for some, some questions now. We're gonna open up. Um, so if you have any questions, please um, type them in and um, perhaps Sophie will be able to let us know. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> yeah, any questions or comments, um, type in. Thank you. They just take a minute or two to come through. Okay. 
There's some coming through. I'll give people about 30 more seconds just to think. Okay. Um, Leanne, I think the first question is for you. Uh, what type of reward system do you have for completing the tasks? <clears throat> uh, for connecting you. Mm. So this is something that's proposed. It's not exactly, it's not in yet. So it's not yep. built into the course yet. Just so things idea. like um, offers on campus, um, depending on how many points they get, they might get a free course book. It could be a um, coffee on campus, a lunch on campus, a voucher to use um, on campus at the cinema, um, something to reward them when they get to certain stages um, of collecting so many points. So let's say 50 points would be, um, I don't know, a lunch voucher. 100 points might be a course book. And 150 points could be something a bit nicer than that, um, cinema tickets or um, dinner out or something like that. <laughs> these all must be um, approved as well. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, these are just some ideas at this stage. Mm. Yeah, okay, great. Someone else has asked, um, how do you address a student's frustration and disappointment at their lack of progress in English learning? Anthony, I might address that one to you as a teacher. <laughs> Wow, yeah, that's a it's a very difficult question actually, um, because you're you're engaging with the student on an individual level, uh, and so I guess some counselling skills actually come in handy uh, at that point. Um, and sometimes I'm not a trained counsellor, but I have done just little bits of training along the way, and very much just. Um, reflecting back the students feeling that they feel frustrated um, with some comments like oh you do seem really frustrated um, at your progress what what do you think's causing this or um, do you think there's anything else that you can do to to improve so um, and I think teachers develop those skills that as as they gain more experience um, and they're not necessarily taught in um, teacher training courses or methodologies it's it's more the, the the soft skills of teachers um in that way it's and it's definitely not easy because i guess the goal is not necessarily to change how the student feels but we we often think oh this is really uncomfortable so i need to make this student happy in this moment and then i'm i'm done with it but it, it may be a question of well, getting the student to reflect on what's happening and and also thinking like, okay, well, what's next? How can we connect you up? So maybe you need some more study support. We've got these uh, options available here. Uh, and what do you think you can be doing in your own time to ensure that you're studying effectively? Hmm. Okay. Yeah, so definitely okay. not an easy question to answer. No, it's not. Um, okay, the next question. Sorry, I'm just my feed. Okay, it's about staff buy-in. So if you think it's easy to get busy, overloaded staff to buy into this process. Um, so for example, with the Curtain Life, Leanne, um, this person said that they know it's compulsory, um, but is this an area that staff are more willing to buy into? because of what seems to be a higher prevalence of mental health issues nowadays? Yeah, I, I would agree. I think um, we follow similar principles here at Curtin English. And this was something that was brought in involving the staff. So we had a conversation about this, I think it was about two years ago um, before we implemented it. And it was at one of our big day out excursions, which involves all management, all general professional staff and teachers. And we actually addressed this there, and we came up with the, with, with Curtain Life pretty much um, as a group. And I think that was the first step in the positive buy-in. And then showing that everyone is involved in this and everyone's invested in it. So me pushing Mental Health Week or pushing the spin classes or um, setting up events and supporting them with the content of Curtain Life, 
making sure that you know it, it is revised it is changed based on student and teacher feedback and um, sending them on training courses so mental health first aid accidental uh, counseling training i think um that that push as well as with the importance of this really helps with the positive buy-in but i i i must reiterate that this really this concept came about with with the teachers here at Curtin English and all staff here, and that really created the buy-in right from the beginning, because they mm. they came up with the ideas too and helped me implement it. Mm. Does that, does uh, that answer the question? I think it does. Yeah. And uh, Anthony, have you had any teachers at your centre um, reluctant to cover those issues in their lessons? Um, it hasn't been voiced to me if they were. I think. Um, in terms of how we've done the lessons is that they they're allocated an hour or two in the class so in terms of extra work for staff they're not extra work so that's a positive yep. thing um and i tried to design the lessons so that i mean they they don't go too deep into some of these issues it's more about triage and um yep. can we connect you with somebody else it's not about well you know um, how are you feeling and, and getting right into your own personal stories. I think you have to be careful about that because it, um, especially across cultures, it can be really difficult to talk about those things. Um, but no, I haven't had any negative feedback. So, and, but I guess if, the, if there was, it would be about training. So what, what should you be talking about in this class and, and, and only talk about things that you are comfortable with and just do it in a more simple way and a shorter, lesson is fine if you, you don't want to get into as much detail, uh, definitely. Mm, okay, great. Um, Leanne, someone's asked about ACT Belong Commit, ABC. Um, yeah. and, and they've said that uh, you've included them in, in some ways in the Curtin Life or um, the Curtin Program. And they're asking if there are any similar organisations in other states. Um, could you explain a little bit about ABC? Um, yes, yeah, so it's an organisation, um, a non-for-profit organisation and uh, Mentally Healthy, I think they, they're also known as. And they do work on campus and you can collaborate with them with a memorandum of understanding. And mm. it's to promote um, activities and involvement in these activities um, across Perth, really for all students and, and anyone, basically. So we um, work with them and they almost sponsor us in some ways. And we have them on all our social program posters and events, and then we report back to them regarding what we've done to accommodate physical activity in the social program. How have we um, accommodated mental health um, issues this month? And we report back to um, At The Long Commit. So it's an organisation that supports um, any mental health implementation cause, if you like. Um, and that was, we started working with them late December last year. I'm not sure of the equivalent in another state. I, I wouldn't know that. But mm -hmm. um, over here, it is at the long commit, um, making students, um, you know, trying to get students to act the long commit to groups. Um, and they mm -hmm. do that by working with various different organisations. Great. Um, Fiona or Anthony, have you heard of anything similar? Yeah, well, I've heard of ABC. Um, mm. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not really familiar with anything like that, no. Yeah, me neither in other states. Okay. Mm. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Sounds fantastic. <laughs> Maybe I can put you in touch with, with them, actually. Um, so there's one last question. Uh, you, you've probably touched on this a little bit already, but um, the person's asking, what are some of the constraints that you've come up against? Constraints. Is this, is this one for me, Sophie? Um, yeah. Either of you can answer if you feel that you would like to talk to that one. Hmm. You're thinking time for this one. I'm, I'm today. <laughs> Any ideas? Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm just thinking. Yeah, on, on in the moment, 
I think the constraints we talked about, so teachers' yeah. comfort with these issues, that they're difficult mm -hmm. issues and um, some of the more serious mental health issues. And, and that's what I emphasised earlier, is that you're not there as a counsellor, but you may be the, the person that's responding to the need at that time. And you really are linking up um, with other services um, as efficiently as you can. Uh, and so I guess constraints, it's about training. Uh, in that respect and within the organisation, like what teachers should be doing and, and how you can best respond to, to students in that moment of crisis or just, just a, a need arising. Yeah, okay. no, I, I, would, I would agree with that. And I think as well, um, we're very lucky because we're on a university campus, so there are processes and procedures that we follow here and services that we can direct students to if it is outside of our area and if it, if it goes beyond the classroom and you know academic counselling with me um, you know we do have those services available for students here. Great. I think sort of within your scope isn't it really you know if you're the teacher and you're often on the coal face um, mm. you, know, you need to be able to link into uh, or tap into other resources you know at the university or in the community. Yeah. Mm. All right. Okay. Um, um, so that that's the last question, Fiona. So I'll pass back oh. to you. Okay. Thank you. Um, well, thank you very much to the panel, to Leanne and to Anthony. Um, and I'd just like to, if you'd like to continue the discussion or share what is what is happening at your centre, then please join um, the EA Mental Health Sick Face. Facebook group, um, which I think we'll we'll pop a link in, um, and then also watch out for a workshop that will, will be coming up at the EA conference a little bit later. Um, okay, so thank and you very much. Fiona, Fiona, what's the workshop about at the conference? So I think it'll be unpacking what is mental health. Mm, okay, and sounds great. All right, well, thank you again to. Um, Anthony and to Leanne and thank you also Fiona for um, organising today's webinar and thanks to everyone for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we'll be um, sending people the link to the recording of today's webinar tomorrow so you'll be able to access that after tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Great, thank you, thanks everyone.